uh, welcome to this uh, uh, lecture. Now, this is the uh, uh, lecture on how to develop a electronic module uh, uh, for designing or for measuring the ECG signal. Now, uh, ECG we know is used for monitoring the uh, health of the heart. So, how whether heart is uh, working properly or not. So, ECG is one of the uh, extremely useful signal to understand the functioning of heart. Now, uh, when we are talking about functioning of heart, we are also talking about the how many bits per minute the heart is pumping right. So, uh, to understand or to develop such a module, we need to understand how can we now use what we have learned in the previous module uh, different amplifiers, uh, different filters right uh, half wave rectifier and a triggering circuit. Uh, so, as to uh, integrate all those components together uh, and form a signal conditioning circuit for the ECG. So, uh, today is uh, today we are, we are going to focus on op amp based ECG signal acquisition conditioning and processing for computation of uh, bits per minute. Uh, so, let us see the first uh, point and that is the how to design the uh, this particular system. So, the first thing let us understand uh, the, the introduction and the introduction about ECG is analyzing electrocardiogram which is also called ECG uh, uh, is not only important to understand the functioning of the heart, but also to understand the abnormalities and the conditioning of the heart is evaluated using ECG signal. Now, the it is one of the simplest fastest easiest cost effective method uh, to evaluate the functioning of the heart and uh, thus ECG monitoring uh, has become a primary test in today's uh, modern hospitals. Uh, the electrical activity is related to the impulses that travel to the heart uh, and that determines the heart rate and the rhythm right. So, this is a important point uh, for us because we want to understand how can we uh, measure this electrical activity and this electrical impulses causes the heart to contact and relax are detected by nothing but the ECG machine and are transformed into form of the waves that can be displayed on a graph or a monitor right. So, several heart problems such as premature contractions, heart block and fibrillations are diagnosed using ECG signal. We will understand what exactly fibrillation means, wh wh what is the difference between uh, in, in a different kind of fibrillation. Uh, we will in, in, in particular we'll focus on atrial fibrillation and uh, sensors that that can help to make the catheter smarter uh, for performing the ablation. So, we will talk about uh, this particular uh, heart disease um, uh, at, at the end of this module, but first let us understand that how can we design this uh, signal conditioning circuit. So, the aim of uh, this particular uh, uh, experiment uh, you can say uh, because why I am saying experiment because uh, we will also see in, in reality how can we uh, uh, how can we design uh, electronic conditioning system which is consisting of acquisition conditioning and processing uh, in a real time ok. So, we will see as a part of the experiment. So, uh, let us see the, the aim, aim is to extract and process the ECG signal from the body uh, and to compute uh, BPM uh, several modules are to be used. In this experiment we will divide the complete system into several such system uh, compute the functionality of each system. So, the following are the subsystems. the first one is the acquisition of ECG signals using non invasive method right is the first one that we need we will see. The second system that we will see is how to design a ECG amplifier circuit. The third system that we will look at uh, is the designing of QRS and half wave rectifier for noise filtering uh, and then we will go for uh, how to understand uh, uh, how to design a comparator and threshold circuit for P detection followed by QRS pulse detector followed by triggering circuit for BPM measurement and then the equipment that we require to understand this is easy signals uh, uh, in the laboratory. Uh, would be a digital oscilloscope function generator we require ECG electrodes and operation amplifiers as well as connecting wires right. So, let us see the first one and the first one uh, would be acquisition of ECG signals and design of the ECG amplifier circuit. So, here uh, uh, you can see that uh, an ECG signal is a very weak signal with a range of just 1 millivolt in amplitude with a frequency range of 0 0.05 to 120 hertz right. So, this is a very important uh, uh, point uh, for us because we have to 
uh, amplify this signal which is extremely low. Uh, as the signal amplitude is very small to process the signal it must be amplified with a high gain of about 1000 right. The typical characteristics of the op amp should be high input impedance, low output impedance, high CMRR. We know that these are kind of idle characteristics uh, that infinite input impedance, zero output impedance and extremely high infinite CMRR. But the practical op amps would have high input impedance, low output impedance and high CMRR. So, the typical circuit for the amplification of EC signals uses instrument amplifier which is shown in figure 2. This is the typical circuit. Okay. We will see uh, in detail how it is done. Uh, for, for now, let us understand the block diagram of the QRS detection. So, for a QRS detection, we have to understand uh, that we have the ECG amplifier which will be followed by pre-processing and then half rectifier, uh, peak detector and finally, the trigger unit. Right. So, these are the steps uh, in the case of the uh, QRS detection. Okay. Then we will move further and uh, further is that uh, we have to design a QRS detector circuit. So, to compute bits per minute QRS complexes are used. The frequency of QRS is about 17 hertz. Uh, the de detection of QRS is represented using the block diagram which we have just discussed. So, let us now see how can we uh, developed uh, ECG amplifier uh, uh, for uh, for the uh, for the QRS signals as well as the BPM. The so the first one is you have to connect the uh, V1 and V2, uh, which is the inputs to the uh, instrument amplifier to a sig to the signal high. This is the common node uh, or uh, common mode operation, and we have to calculate its common mode gain. The second process is we have to connect V1 to the input signal high and V2 to the uh, signal low, uh, so that the, uh, this is a differential mode operation and we calculate the differential mode gain. Finally, we will connect all three electrodes to, uh, to the body as shown here R A, L A and R L uh, uh, to the and, and, and we can see that R L is connected to the ground through 10 kilo ohm resistor and then connect these electrodes to the amplifier inputs and observe the amplifier output at the oscilloscope. Now, whatever I am saying it will become little bit difficult for you to uh, understand directly, but when we go for the experiment then we will understand in detail how this is done in reality. Okay. So, the pre-processing which is a uh, important part how we are uh, performing that experiments or how we are uh, developing the system for the pre-processing. The amplifier EG signal is processed through a filter to remove the noise or unwanted signal. Uh, pre-processing of EG signals helps to remove contaminants alright. So, the we have to pre-process the signal before for the next stage. So, and then ECG concerns. So, what actually contaminants in ECG signals are? The contaminants in ECG signals are that we have electro electrode pop or contact noise. We also have baseline wandering, we have uh, EMG noise, right, which is also called electro uh, myograph, and then we have patient electrode uh, motion artifacts, right, because if you if you correct the electrodes, if the patient is moving, then there is a motion artifact. We have to take care of that, right. Uh, we have to take off the e EMG, EMG comes from the muscles, right, the signal coming from the muscles. If I am moving my muscles then there is a signal that is generated from the muscles which can be measured with the help of electromyograph. Okay. And then we have power line interference uh, that is a ec extra thing that uh, will come into effect. We have contact noise, we have uh, uh, electrode pop. So, all these things uh, will contribute uh, in the contaminants for measuring the during the measurement of the ECG signal. Right. So, now, for our country the power line noise comes uh, uh, is a narrow band noise uh, around 50 hertz and with a bandwidth of less than uh, uh, 1 hertz. Uh, so, we can use a notch filter uh, at a frequency of 50 hertz right. Now, you have seen different filters and uh, in this uh, the uh, notch filter uh, if you can design for 50 hertz you know right what is notch filter it is a band reject filter. Now, if it is just single frequency it looks like a notch that is why we say notch filter. So, if you can design a notch filter for, for 50 hertz frequency then uh, the power line interference will be taken care of. So, let us see here uh, what I was saying is that there are several contaminants we have just seen 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then the power lines interference in narrow band noise around 50 hertz we have talked about it notch filter we can develop a center of 50 hertz. Uh, however, these signals are on multiple and can be filtered using a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of about 
100 hertz right since these are the or multiple we can use the cutoff frequency 100 hertz and since this is below 100 hertz we, are, we can use a low pass filter. Uh, the motion artifacts which are the another contaminants and the range of less than 1 hertz hence high pass filter the cutoff frequency of 1 hertz can be designed to filter out the noise due to motion artifacts. So, what we require? We require a low pass filter with cutoff frequency of 100 hertz, we require high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 1 hertz and finally, we require a notch filter with a center frequency of 50 hertz. So, these are the requirements uh, uh, for pre-processing. Now, uh, let us see how can we design uh, each of these filters. Okay? We start with the low pass filter. So, you can see here in the circuit right the circuit is of low pass filter and uh, if we keep a value of R 1 and R 2 as 670 kilo ohm and capacitors value is as 2.2 uh, nano farad uh, and then we have a gain of 1 and our frequency will be 1 by 2 pi uh, R c. Uh, so, F c equals to 1 by 2 pi R c and that will give us close to 108 hertz this is our low pass filter design. Uh, for the experimental procedure what we can do? We can apply a sinus signal of 1 volts uh, amplitude generated by signal generator at 1 hertz into the integrator uh, and observe the output uh, input and output on the oscilloscope. We can also calculate the gain. Uh, second one is that with a frequency of 1 hertz increase the signal frequency time step of 20 hertz up to 200 hertz and record the output of each frequency. Uh, this is actually the experiment procedure. Finally, we can also go for observing the signal generator frequency for which the output is 0 0.707 times lower than the input signal which is your minus 3 dB point. Uh, and finally, you can have the we can we have to verify the operation of a low pass filter by the input frequency greater than the cutoff frequency care should not pass right. So, this is how you should perform the uh, experiment uh, like I said we will perform the experiment for the ECG uh, in detail. Now, let us understand the second part which is your high pass filter design. Now, in the high pass filter design what we are working on? We are working on uh, designing a high pass filter right which you can see here and here you if we have resistance value of R 1 R 2 equals to 1 kilo ohm and R 3 R 4 equals to uh, 1.5 kilo ohm where C 1 equals 100 microfarad and C 2 also equals 100 microfarad. Then we know the, uh, the uh, F C which is a cutoff frequency value uh, would be nothing but 1 by 2 pi under root of R 1 R 2 C 1 C 2 since R 1 equals to R 2 and C 1 equals to C 2. Uh, you can have or you can in this case is like R3, R4, C1, C2. So, uh, yeah, if you have these values then what will be the FC? FC would be nothing but 1 by 2 pi under root of R square C square which is nothing but 1 by 2 pi R C right. So, this is what we are using here and that is why it is 1 by 2 pi R, uh, R C uh, uh, and what we get is close to uh, 1 hertz uh, your gain is nothing but 1 plus r 2 by r 1. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, uh, formula uh, experiment, uh, for experimental procedure we will apply the input voltage uh, which is sine wave of 1 volt amplitude uh, and uh, generated by uh, 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 at 200 hertz into the differentiator and observe the input and the output at the oscilloscope and we calculate the gain. Second one is starting with a frequency of 200 hertz we decrease the signal frequency in step of 20 hertz to near DC and record output at each frequency. Finally, we will observe the signal generator for the frequency for the uh, for which the output is 0 0.707 times or you can say minus 3 dB point or the low corner frequency and we will verify the operation of a, of a high pass filter uh, not low pass filter uh, where the input frequency lower than the cutoff frequency should not pass. Now, how can you design notch filter? Notch filter is very easy to design we have seen in the earlier uh, modules. Uh, here what we have is F o equals to 1 by 2 pi uh, R 1 into C 1 which is 1 by 2 pi R C we substitute the values uh, uh, which are already given here and you can uh, design the notch filter right. Now, here uh, if you want to perform the experiment what you have to do you have to apply the 
1 volt uh, amplitude generated by signal generator at 50 hertz into the filter and observe the input and output voltages on the oscilloscope. Then we can change the frequency from 30 hertz to 80 hertz uh, in a step of 10 hertz and record the output as the frequency. What we want we are the that 50 hertz should not pass through the uh, filter and remaining frequency can pass through. We can observe the signal gener uh, generator frequency for which the output is again 0 0.707 times um, lower than the input signal or you can say uh, it is a minus 3 dB point and finally, we can uh, uh, verify the operation of a notch filter. This is how the filters are designed. So, what if you see go and go back what we have to do? We have to design a low pass filter, high pass filter and a notch filter. So, that is what we have done here. Then let us understand the next stage. So, we are now understanding the half wave rectifier. Now, <coughs> in the case of a half wave rectifier, the filtered EC signals is rectified uh, using a half wave rectifier to remove the negative signals, right. We do not require negative signals uh, as our intention is only to find out the positive peak, uh, the negative peak will be rectified using a half wave rectifier. So, what is experimental procedure? Experimental procedure is apply a sine wave uh, input signal of 1 volt in the input uh, V in um, at 100 hertz generated by signal generator at the non inverting terminal which is right over here. Then we have to observe both input voltage and the output voltage on the oscilloscope. Next one would be we will verify the operation of a half rectifier, half rectifier very easy to design uh, which is right over here. So, it is a very extremely simple uh, uh, design right. Now, let us go for the next one. The next one is nothing but a peak detector circuit. So, for peak detector circuit what is a uh, uh, circuit, how circuit will look like? So, it will look like the one shown here and how it is going to help us because it is used to store the peak of the filter signal using the capacitor. Right, the fraction of the peak voltage is used as the threshold voltage is compared with the filtered and rectified EC signal using the comparator. Right, this is your this one. Once a QRS pulse is detected, uh, when the threshold voltage is exceeded, the uh, capacitor recharges to a new threshold value. So, this is the threshold voltage. If it exceeds the earlier one, the capacitor will recharge to a new value. Right, uh, after every pulse, and the new threshold determined from the history of signal is generated after every pulse. The output voltage you can measure right across uh, this particular uh, circuit and if you want to uh, verify the circuit using experiments then what you have to do you have to apply a uh, DC input signal of 1 volt at V in observe input and output voltage on the oscilloscope and you have to verify the operation of a uh, half wave rectifier. Now, if we see, uh, so you can also, so yeah, in case of um, uh, signal, you can also apply the uh, sine wave and look at the operation. It is not just like every time you have to go for DC, you can also increase the frequency and you can see what happens at the input and what happens at the output for the same, uh, uh, for, for the same circuit, but at the different, for, for the different signal. Finally, if we understand trigger unit, then it's, uh, it becomes very uh, important because uh, trigger unit is nothing but a pulse generated for every QRS complex that we know and is detected using the comparator and triggers the LED which is right over here. So, every time the QRS complex is detected, we are the, the, the uh, uh, there is a, there is a uh, comparator here and uh, whenever there is a high, uh, this will the LED will glow, when there is a low, the LED will not glow because uh, uh, it is a comparator circuit, you know the functioning of a comparator. Uh, if the if it is the non inverting signal is higher than the inverting signal, the comparator output will be higher. If the inverting signal is higher than non inverting signal, then the output will be lower and based on that the LED will glow or it will not glow or you can drive or we cannot drive the LED depending on the signal at the output. For the experimental procedure, we can apply a input DC, a pulse input DC, a signal of 5 volts at the input voltage V in. Um, you can observe the uh, input and output voltage on the oscilloscope and finally, we can verify the operation of the circuit as a monostable multi vibrator. Right? So, what you observe here? You observe a very interesting application. What we have just understood is there is an instrument amplifier, there, is, there are filters, and then there is a comparator, and there is a triggering circuit. So, when we connect these uh, leads to the uh, instrument amplifier, 
right uh, then what will happen the instrument amplifier will pick up the signal and we will uh, because of its high CMRR the common mode signals are rejected uh, and the uh, differential signal is amplified and further fed to the low pass filter right. Uh, now we know for low pass filter we have reason a filter which can filter out uh, anything above uh, 100 hertz and then we have a high pass filter that is for anything um, for the 1 hertz frequency. Uh, then we have a notch filter uh, that is for the 50 hertz frequency. Then we have a half wave rectifier because we are interested only in the positive signals of the QRS and then we have a peak detector where for every QRS signal so it will detect a peak and finally we have a LED. So, that LED will help us to understand how many bits per minute uh, this QRS signals are generating and that will help us to understand the uh, count the number of bits right. So, now what do you guys see? You guys see that uh, uh, integrating all the uh, uh, circuits together will, will form a signal conditioning unit right. This is how the ECG would work. Uh, I will see you uh, in the next class and uh, you just look at the uh, look at this particular video if you have any questions feel free to ask us in the forum right. Uh, so, you take care and I will see you in the next class bye.